Hello and welcome to another episode of the Pro Tipster Football Podcast. Or I should call this the Pro Tipster Sports Betting Podcast. We have rebranded and we will be relaunching very soon under the guise of a new podcast. But anyway, more on that on a later date. Uh, this will be the final of our football-focused podcasts, um, and we're going to make it a very, very special one. I'm joined by the dream team of the Pro Tips of UK crew. We have Pro Tipsers Martin, Dan, and Johnny here, and we're going to talk about all of the upcoming Champions League action that we're going to see this week. Hello, gentlemen. How's it going? Very well, Paddy. Very well. Very well here as well. Okay. Looking forward. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Right then. So look, we'll get straight onto this then. There's loads of Champions League action to talk about. Uh, Bayern Munich are taking on uh, Turkish side Besiktas. I want to start with you, Johnny, because you've written an article for our website about this match. Yeah, so Bayern versus Besiktas, of course, the favourites uh, are from Munich, uh, the German team who are in incredible form under Jupp Heynckes. They've got 18 wins, one draw and one defeat to München Gladbach. So they are definitely the favourites. And so so the odds reflect um, how big the, the, the favourites they are. Um, Besiktas, they've got to prove themselves their first time in this stages of the, of the Champions League in the round of 16. They have to deal with departure of their probably one of their most important or influential players in the group stage, Cenk Tosun, who left to Everton. Uh, there was not much move in the Bayern's squad over the winter. Uh, they signed uh, Sandro Wagner, uh, who came from Hoffenheim, who is a good alternative to Lewandowski, especially if you want to keep Lewandowski fit for the most important uh, games in the Champions League. And we have to also take into account that this is probably one of the last opportunities for players like Robin and Ribery to win another Champions League. So uh, they will be fully fully motivated. Uh, and Bayern, with, in the current form and under Heinkes with the improved defense and with this goal-scoring goal efficiency, are one of the title contenders for the UEFA Champions League. Um, one interesting stat, the in the last 10 matches in the Champions League were all overs, so we're looking into a lot of goals uh, when Bayern Munich are involved. However, they will face Besiktas who, if they want to stand a chance in the in the return leg in uh, Istanbul, which will be a very difficult tie for Bayern if Besiktas manage to keep uh, the result reasonable in the first leg. Uh, it might be actually, as I see it, it might be advantage for Bayern to play first leg at home. Uh, because they can build, a, you know, they can they can make a good result and then go to a very diff- to Istanbul quite well, not say relaxed, but uh, in a, in in a better in a better mood because playing in Istanbul is not nothing easy. So, betting wise, uh, the Asian handicap line is set quite high. Uh, the it started as 1.75, moved to 2.25. Uh, almost reaching two, two and a two point five. So, at the moment, and at the time of writing the article, the, the line of two point twenty five was the odds for Bayern Munich were one point eight five, and Besiktas plus two point twenty five was one point nine seven. So, the market expects Bayern to win win this one by two three goals. Let's say by three goals, uh, where I don't see much value in this market because of course Bayern are the favourites and they are probably going to win this game but as as much as they can win by two goals they can win by three goals by one goal so Johnny or um, well I suppose all of you can probably answer this question. On on on, on a line movement like 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 that, um you know, have, did the bookies get it completely wrong or, or, or are the market wrong? As in the punters? I think the the one point seven five was uh let's say the more realistic line. Uh it shifted more to uh, because of I think the current form of Bayern is that's why people heavily bet on Bayern to win and on the handicap and that's why the line moved. Uh, it's 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 a natural thing in uh, in terms of uh, betting and trading. So uh, yeah, the car. I mean, they're they've been incredible. Even like in the weekend when it looked like they they can lose points against Wolfsburg, uh, they they won with the late penalty that Lewandowski scored. Um, they somehow find a way to win, to win the matches, and they play pretty well. Um, Heinkes is the coach. I think it's one of the 
uh, not say best coaches for Bayern, but yeah, actually that we, we can say that he's one of the best coaches for Bayern. He know how, he knows how to handle the team. He has respect, and that's most important when you've got players like Robin Ribery and Lewandowski and others. So I think that that's this is the main reason for for, for this line to to shift to to a higher higher line. Okay, uh, Dan, do we shift this for any chance at all? Um, you know what? People have been writing Besiktas off all the way through this tournament, and they've kept winning games. Um, even the Besiktas fans at work in the office have been saying, "Now nah, we're going to win this one." And then the next morning they've come in happy as you know, happy as Larry because Besiktas have done it again. Um, but things are different. The uh, Chen Tyson is a massive loss, even though he can't get into the Everton team. He was um he was playing so well for Besiktas. And it's Bayern, the Allianz Arena. Um, I just, I, we've spoken before on the podcast about how boring Bayern are in the uh, Bundesliga. <laughs> my, my my only hope is that they're so because they're you know they're so far in front of the Bundesliga that maybe complacency sets in. Yeah. Um, I'm not I'm not actually going to bet on this game until after it. I'm only going to bet on it in play. Mm. And I've got a, I've got a theory on this. I'm going to watch the first ten minutes. If Bayern score in the first 10 minutes, I think they'll crucify Besiktas. And I'll probably go in heavy on that way. But if Besiktas can withstand it for 10 minutes and, and, you know, start creating frustration in the Bayern side, then I'm probably going to go for Besiktas on the handicap. I think it's one of those where an early goal will set, will, early goal will set the tone in the match. Mm. Um, either Bayern will, like, score early. And, you know, either put a couple in. Well, I, th- I think they'll, they'll, they'll want to rack up a few because they won't want to um, risk anything in Istanbul. Um, I was reading Johnny's article, which, by the way, if you haven't read, you should read because it is really, really good. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, I was reading about Besiktas not taking the away fans to Munich. And I was going to ask Johnny if he knew why that was. Yeah, I remember uh, when they played Lyon last, last season, and there were some crowd troubles. Uh, yeah. Uh, you, you remember Martin, right? And, yeah, yeah. Uh, th- there was this. Uh, I think there, there was. Yeah, if if they would make another trouble, then they would be banned from for two years from uh, European competitions. So yeah. I think that's w- w- what I found out that the uh, flat president decided that they will not risk it and they will not take fans to. So they didn't sell them any tickets. Obviously, there is the risk that the home fans, because the, the tickets that were supposed to be in for the away section for Besiktas fans were sold to. By the home club to to the home supporters. So obviously, with so many uh, Turks living in Germany, you have always some risk of having some Besiktas fans scattered around the stadium, uh, which they would get the tickets from the home fans. But uh, officially, there were, there are not supposed to be no Besiktas uh, supporters. Okay. So it's a, it's something that's like a prevention, let's say this way, by by the away club. It's an interesting thing. I I, I understand completely why they've done it. I don't, I don't think it'll even hurt, I don't think it'll hurt them that much because I don't think having fans there or not would make that much of a difference. Mm. So, I'm looking forward to the game though. Um, it just doesn't do anything for me, you know, it's Bayern Munich. Hey, Robert Lewandowski, you feel so good, come to the Premier League and show us you can do it. <laughs> he would have been in the Premier League if it wasn't for an ash cloud. That's what he would have, he, he would have played for Big Sam. Okay, yeah. I'll tell you this is a fact. I, well, I can actually tell you this is a fact. As a 19 year old, uh, when he was back in Poland, there was a, a, a British club looking at an English club looking at him, and they decided no. Oh. I mean, City. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Uh, they must regret that. <laughs> you know? Nah, it'd have been awful for us. It'd have been a, just another. Another name in the list of awful players for us. <laughs> right, Martin, what's your prediction for that? Um, like Dan, really. I mean, I'm not I'm not too excited about the game. I think you know Bayern are so dominant. Um, I don't don't enjoy watching them play too much. Um, but again, like Johnny said, it's the last chance probably for the likes of Robin and Ribery to to, to win a decent trophy and. I think they could go all the way, you know. I think they're certainly capable of getting to the semi-finals. Um, not actually lost in this this part of the competition, the last 16. I think since since they lost to Inter a few years ago, um, I think about seven or eight years ago now. And I, there's not a lot of value, let's be honest, in this game at all. Um, I, 
like Dan said, I don't think Besiktas having no fans there will do do them any damage. However, they they need to keep it tight, and and they did actually win all the, all three of their group games away from home. But it is by Munich, and they just don't lose at home. Um, what thirteen wins in a row, and I think they only defeat. I think like last twenty three or twenty four games, they've only lost to Munich and Gladbach, so. You know, they're not being tested, which could open the door up for a little bit of complacency. However, um, I'm, I'm not sure whether Bayern are going to win it by two or three. So I, although there's not a lot of value there, the best value that I could find personally was both teams to score no at 1.61. Um, might stick that in an acker because I can see them winning by a couple of goals and not conceding at the back. Uh, it's the one thing though about about Heinkes. Heinkes has experience with these lads, and he is able to motivate them when you know others kind of couldn't. Like we saw Pep Guardiola fail with Bayern uh, around this just after this stage in the competition because it's hard to keep these uh, prima donnas happy. There's a lot of stars in that team, isn't there? It must be really happy, really hard to keep them all happy. Oh yeah. Um... Uh, he's he's very well respected in the world of football, so you know I think he's got a, he's got an angry side as well. So you don't want to get the wrong side of Henkes. Yeah. To be honest. It's like it's like when your granddad gets angry with you. You're like, oh god, I must have done something really bad if my granddad. <laughs> 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 right, we'll uh, we'll leave that one then, and we'll move on to the big one of of the of the week. Uh, Chelsea, Antonio's Conte, Chelsea are taking on Messi and Co. Barcelona. Dan, we'll start with you. I know you're a big fan of La Liga. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> tell me sarcasm in my voice. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not normally a fan of Chelsea, but I really hope they win this one. <laughs> I really hope they win this one. Um, I can't even read my handwriting. Oh yeah, one loss at home for Chelsea <laughs> in September, all competitions. Martin obviously wrote a great preview for this, so I'm just reading his notes here. Um, <laughs> Barcelona, no Coutinho, because he's not eligible. So, was it, wasn't it Paulinho who played broke wing for them at the weekend? So, yeah, yeah. I think mm. he was on the bench, it was Mario Dembele. So, I reckon Dembele's going to get the run. Um, the thing is, Bar- Barca aren't that great, um, well, they don't score goals away from home, um, in the Champions League, from what, from what I remember. Um, they're, they're group games, they, they, they weren't fantastic, and, Chelsea, it depends what Chelsea team turns up. Yeah. Because um, sometimes they turn up and they're amazing. And then sometimes you're like, you're going to get Conte sacked. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think the signing of Giroud has been a good thing. I, I think he's definitely been a good signing for them. And in the cup win, um, Pedro and Willian both took the chances coming to the team pretty well. Uh, in fact, Conte, I thought, um, did a good thing because he, um, he brought some one of the kids, uh, Callum Hudson O'Doy. The second half, he took, um, was it Pedro to go off 45 minutes? So, you know, he's rested players all the way through. Ampadu played, um, as well. The weekend, he brought on, uh, the young American lad. So the squad should be nicely fit and ready to go. And I'm just hoping that Barca, like, having to play a league game and not, not doing so great. Um, I'm hoping that will work against them. I really, really, really can't stress how much I want Chelsea to win. <laughs> um, and, and I hope people remember that um, before the weekend, I kind of was like, please follow them, please follow them win. And they did. So clearly someone up there likes me. So hopefully it's just in again. And Chelsea are going to do it this time. Lightning might strike Dan twice, huh? Um, Johnny, <laughs> what do you think of this? Uh, this is... This is a very interesting game. Uh, the first the first thought I had when I was doing research for this game, um, like Johnny looked at the odds for under 2.5 goals, so I, I did look look it up, mm. and uh, it's quite it's quite interesting 1.9. Um, so that's something I fancy. Uh, obviously, Chelsea will will have to stop uh, Messi and others, but uh, it's a difficult game. Difficult times, I, I would say, for, for Chelsea. Although Barcelona are not doing that great in in La Liga recently, but Champions League, we all know that uh, it's a completely different uh, different competition. I'm still I still still recall the 2012 uh, semi-finals when Chelsea advanced uh, into the into the final and 
eliminated Barcelona. Although it's it, it, the teams are different, so you know it's it's hard to, it's hard to compare. Um, well, yeah, it, it it's a difficult match for for betting wise because uh, you never know how it works out for Barcelona uh, on the on English soil, let's say, uh, playing playing away to in England. How Chelsea will approach the game if they will park the bus or or if they will play try to play active game because Barcelona improved their defense uh, recently. Uh, uh, that's my opinion. This uh, this season under Valverde, so they and that's quite important when you play uh, two legs a tie in the Champions League. So I would I would say this we're gonna see a very low scoring first game, and then we might. See some goals in the uh, return leg like in no comp. Yeah, because Barca they're, they're they're not actually scoring a lot. The last five games uh, have been one nil, one one, and nil two to Barca, nil nil, and nil two. so what's that? One two four. So only six goals in the last five games for Barcelona, which is like probably their worst goal scoring run in years. Yeah, there is there is an interesting that Chelsea have drawn five of their last six matches against Barcelona. Mm. So in all competitions and. Uh, yeah, and then Barcelona have kept a clean sheet in six of their last seven Champions League matches. So, yeah, something like nil-nil, one-one draw. I know it doesn't so John, sound Johnny, too, too exciting. No, no, Johnny. But I, I, no, but I know, I know you like going against uh, going against the crowd and going against the market. This is this is exactly that type of game, isn't it? Because a lot of people they 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 see oh Chelsea Barcelona are playing there's probably lots of goals I'll bet on goals because over 2.5 is 1.84 which isn't bad that's okay for this type of match but there's like like you've already said there's there's, there's value well, there as I say, go the as I say it and I, yeah as I say it and I, um and looking at the lines the the goals li- the goal line sorry uh even two if you if you find a different bookies 2.75 line for under it's quite exciting because if there are three goals you've got half stake uh half stake lost but half stake back so mm-hmm. that quite reduces the risk but uh, definitely value the value and I, it's definitely on uh, under and I think I, I can see actually that the odds are rising a bit, so if you maybe even wait a bit and then go for that if if if, if you fancy. Mm-hmm. Good advice there. Over to you, Martin. Um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm liking the look of unders. I've got 1.85. So the fact, yeah, Johnny said it's 1.9 now, so it's going up slightly. Um, the, high, the highest uh, one I uh, can see is 2.10. Wow. Yeah. 2.1. Nice. Um, I think it's definitely worth having a punt on that. There's, a, there's some decent value in it, just based on the stats and the fact that Barcelona just aren't, aren't great and scoring many goals away from home at the minute. Um, just looking at it, I, I said in my um, in my article on the Pro Tips, the website, about the, the three away games in, in the group stage. They, they have to rely on an own goal to be sport in Lisbon, and the other two games against Juve and Olympiacos, they drew nil-nil. So they are struggling to score away from home in this competition, and Messi's never scored against Chelsea. Um, and, you know, they, they may well target him and shut him out again. And, you know, I think you need Messi to be on form for Barca um, to be a, a decent side away from home. Um, but the, the, the caution is, it's a tough one to predict because I think you're looking at the group stage, I, I think Unders was something to go for when Chelsea played Roma and that, and that ended up being free all. Um, <laughs> So it's, it's a tough one to bet on, but I think if we're going to go for anything, I think unders is the way to go. Um, for me, for Chelsea, uh, Giroud's done well for me, so be interesting to see whether Morata or Giroud starts. Or both. This, is the, this is exactly what I was going to ask you. Who do you think will start? <laughs> He's got to go Giroud, hasn't he? After the I last first, match. I would go match. Giroud, yeah. but I, I think he might go uh, Morata. You think? Uh, I mean, uh, I think Blessing in Disguise, Bakayoko doesn't look like he's He's back yet because um, he's been playing terribly over the last few weeks. But Alonso was in training this morning, so he was missing for the last couple of games. But he, he'll probably play. 
Um, I, I'm just looking forward to it as a neutral. I'm just hoping, you know, it's, a, it's probably going to be a tight game. Um, hoping for a little bit of magic from either side, really. Obviously, remember the Ronaldinho goal and, and the Iniesta last minute winner a few years ago. So, if we get a little bit of uh, magic like that, I'll be happy. Oh, that was wonderful. That was when Drogba went nuts, wasn't it, at the end? That, that was <laughs> yeah. beautiful. That was one of the best pieces of television I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it's it's knocked the question all out of my head now. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, West Ham fan being neutral in a Chelsea match. That's that's quite quite bizarre. I mean, <laughs> for me, like, because we're never anywhere near European competition, I always like to see the English and UK clubs do well. Um, so I, I, I hope Chelsea win. Um, although it's going to be tight. If I had to predict, I, I, I'd go for a narrow Chelsea win, maybe one 0 or something like that. Mm, I'd like to see that, Ari, as well. I would, but but it's more because I like Conte rather than Chelsea. I don't particularly mm. like Chelsea. I do I do like Antonio Conte uh, quite a lot. Uh, boys, is that nice to say with this one before we move on because it's definitely the tie of the round. Um, uh, who's going to? So uh, yeah, you reckon uh, they're going to go with Morata? Does everyone agree on that? I want him, I want it, I want them to go with Giroud, but I just feel they'll go with Maranta. Um, I do think it'll be Giroud. Tricking. Yeah, I've got to think it's going to be Giroud. Um, I don't think Maranta's in any great form, and I don't think uh, Maranta's quite right, in the, quite in the right headspace either. I think it's going to be Giroud. I think so as well. Mm. Oh, I'll say so. The, the, the case I would make for Maranta is only that he's a former Real player, and... Uh, he has scored against Barca a couple of times while playing for, for Real and for Juventus. So they don't, they haven't figured out how to handle him. On the Giroud side, Barcelona do know how to handle Giroud because they've played, they've played Giroud loads of times. Arsenal and, 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 and Barca. So mm. yeah, that's a tough one for Conte. Probably though, we'll go with Giroud. Giroud was excellent the other day for Chelsea. Set up that, that lovely goal for Hazard. Um, so yeah. yeah, he's going to be playing that type. But he, I don't. He's, he's not going to be playing as an outer striker. He's going to be holding up the ball a lot for uh, for all of those number tens that are in Antonio Conte's side. Thanks for listening to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to ProTipster.com for more details. Right, let's move yeah. on then to uh, Seville and Manchester United, where uh, Manchester United fans are probably going to get their heads knocked off of them by Spanish police, as is what they usually do over in Seville. Uh, Dan, let's go, let's go with you. Um, so Seville, coming to this game, three wins in a row, unbeaten at home in the Champions League uh, this season. I don't know, I, I, as people know, I'm not a fan of La Liga, so I'm not going to pretend I know much about Sevilla. But Man U, they're a different, uh, a different kettle of fish. Beat Huddersfield in the cup, um, when it should have been Birmingham City. Thumps. Not that I'm bitter or anything. Um, Man United beat Huddersfield in the cup. Um, they're supposed to wait winning three on Saturday. Um, Pogba obviously, uh, Pogba was out injured. Uh, but there's been all this stuff about Pogba not fitting into the way Man U play. 100 million pound player and they can't work out how to get him in the team. It just seems really, really strange to me. Really, really strange. Um, it's actually the first time they meet, uh, competitively. Dan, Dan, yeah. on that, on that, Dan, do you think there's more to it or do you just think that Mourinho just doesn't want Pogba to play how Pogba is best at playing? Um, I don't know. Um, I honestly don't know. I mean, Pogba's got a reputation for being um, a bit of an arse, hasn't he? Like, he he left left Man U in a kind of cloud. Um, I don't think, you know, he he went um, in it. uh, I don't don't think it was uh, in great fashion he went. And so you you look at the... um, you look at that and you think, yeah, maybe it's just that. Maybe he's just an ass, And <laughs> Mourinho's just had enough. Um, I'm just reading something here. And it says, like, um, Mourinho, you know, they brought in Alexis Sanchez. You can play like 4 3 3. You play like, um, Sanchez and one of Martial, Rashford, Lingard, Frank, and Lukaku. But, um, it doesn't really work uh, with Pogba and Matic in midfield because you need a third midfielder and like you can't have Pogba and Matic dead centre. You need just like in four three three, you need to have like one kind of left, one kind of right. Mm-hmm. So you need someone who's going to balance the team when Pogba like bumps forward. So that's why he's going four two three one. But uh, I, I don't know. 
I honestly don't know what's going on with Pogba. I mean, I read um, I read an article in L'Equipe saying that he regretted um, re-signing for United, but there was no there were no direct quotes, so, so that was probably made up. <laughs> you see, the thing is, people say people say it was probably made up. L'Equipe's quite a um, reputable newspaper, mm. and it might be a. He said, she said sort of thing, like, um, that, like a source close to Pogba said that Pogba said he was close to, he, he, he regretted going back and he probably was like, so he said something that was a little bit like that, but wasn't quite, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm a believer that, you know, it's smoke without fire. Uh, there's no smoke without fire, um, apart from dry ice, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for the actual game itself, Man United's away form, you know, not being great. They lost their only match they played with Sevilla was a friendly, and they lost that one three one, I think. Um, it was one of these like Ameri- you know, these friendlies they play in America. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And Sevilla on the back of three, I, I just don't fancy Man United in the, in the, in. I, I know they've got to do well because they're not going to win the Premier League, but I don't think the side's good enough. Um, Sanchez can play, can't he? Because yeah, he can. Because yeah. Um, they only, he only played Europa League. Um, but I, I don't know. I think <sighs> I, I'm, I, I'm probably going to wait for the. Uh, I'm probably I'm probably going to wait for the lineups in this one, but I'm not convinced. All right, let's go with you, then, Martin. Um, yeah, I'm sort of with Dan. I'm, I'm not convinced United will will win the game in Spain, but I've gone for both teams to score at 1.78. I think United have got a goal in them, uh, you know, with the likes of Sanchez and Lukaku. Obviously, he scored uh, in the FA Cup game, so his confidence is all right at the moment. Um, and let's not forget, you know, Liverpool Liverpool went three 0 up with it against Sevilla, and you know, a few months ago, and. All right, they they ruined that, and and Sevilla come out of it with a free all draw at the end. But you know they are vulnerable at the back at times, and I I can see maybe like Sevilla sneaking it two one or something like that. Um, but they have got a couple of problems. Nelito's not not playing; he's out. Uh, Joaquin Correa he he pulled his hammy at the weekend, I think. So I don't know if he's out or or, or doubtful, but if he misses that, that'll be a big loss. And you know, Ever Benega's still doubtful. I think he's been out for a, for a week or two. Um, so I I yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a tight game. I can see United scoring, but I can't see them winning. Um, I think. You know, if they if they t- if they turn up like they did at Newcastle and Spurs, they'll get battered. But I think over the last couple of games, that you know they've improved a little bit, and maybe Pogba was a bad influence. And the fact that he's he's not in the starting eleven at the moment is a good thing for them. Who knows? But you know something's going on there. Um, but yeah, for me, severe to sneak it. But both teams to score is the value for me. Okay, good stuff. Over to you then, Johnny. Uh, interesting tie. Um, Sevilla never made it past round of 16, and obviously we know that they're quality European side, but uh, it relates mostly to to Europa League. Uh, they were them winning it uh, three times. Um, we have to take note that uh, Sevilla actually changed coaches uh, in in winter. So speaking about Sevilla in group stage, and now might be a bit, you know, we have to take this into account that they might just adopt their game a bit uh, differently. Uh, for Manchester United, of course, the motivation is huge because they're back in round of, in the knockout stages of the Champions League after a while. And, uh, I think these, these are kind of games for Mourinho where he can show his masterclass over a match over two legs where he can, uh, uh prepare a strategy for the, those 180 minutes and spread, uh, spread it over two, two matches. So, uh, I've read a stat that United uh, have lost only once in the last eight visits to Spain, which is, uh, I can't, actually couldn't believe it, but yeah, apparently that's, that's it. And, uh, Sevilla won six of their last nine European home, home matches, losing one and drawing in the other two. So that's, it, the stats would, uh, quite incredible for both teams. But, uh, the market, the market expects, uh, Low scoring game and, uh, is in, is slightly in favor of Sevilla because the goal, the goal line changed from 2.5 to 2.25. So, uh, there are expectations of, uh, not, not many goals. 
you know, also the Asian handicap line moved from 0 0.25 to uh, plus 0 0.25 on on uh, Sevilla to zero, which uh, to, to draw a bet. So that indicates that uh, people tend to believe uh, that Sevilla can get something out of this game against uh, Man United, and very likely so. I think they can do it, but it will be very difficult. Uh, they've got some. They can control the the game at home with their four two three one. Uh, I think they they kept uh, Zonzi in their team uh, in the winter, which is probably the best uh, they could they could have done. And uh, also important factor for is not so much for the first match, but also for the for the for the second leg is that Sevilla have got a few players that uh, experience the Premier League, so they won't be too not say scared, but too surprised by the atmosphere at Old Trafford because you know it's a bit different when we play at Old Trafford away. So, but speaking about this first leg, uh, I can see this as a, a draw, or a low scoring draw. Let's go then to the last one then. So Shakhtar Donetsk are taking on uh, Roma in the final one. I don't think there's many people really going to be watching this one on the night unless they're <laughs> Shakhtar and Roma fans. Everyone's going to be watching Seville and Man United. But you know, nonetheless, um, Shakhtar have had a couple of Really good surprise results. They beat Manchester City, the first team to do so this season, other than Liverpool did it a few weeks later. Um, I had to get them, get in there, lad, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Johnny, we'll stay with you then. Uh, I think actually this is more important, Ty. Uh, more, more interesting, uh, match than the Sevilla Manchester United, to be very honest. Uh, Hipster. I, 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 I can actually <laughs> see what, why you're not so interested in this one, but, uh, it should be entertaining. Uh, Shakhtar are pretty, pretty good. They're strong technically and physically a team, especially at home. Well, we have to say they don't play actually in Donetsk. They still play in Kharkiv. Uh, we all know for, for which reasons, but, uh, um, but basically they're playing at home. Yeah, they, they played there so many games by now. Uh, they played, these two teams played each, with each, uh, against each other. During 2010-11 season in the round of 16, and Shakhtar won both games 3-2 away and 3-0 at home. So I think this is one of the most interesting matches actually in the round of 16 because you've got two teams that will be that both were happy with the draw. I'm pretty sure because they avoided some big teams. Both will feel that they can make a big result by advancing into the quarterfinals. Because let's be honest, both can uh, I mean both can advance. I mean Shakhtar can beat Roma and vice versa. Uh, the current form is better, well, this is also a question. Roma was not in really good form. Now they, I think, won three in a row, but before that they were winless for seven or eight games. Yeah. On the other side, Shakhtar, it's, it's an Eastern European team, and we know, you know, what's the problem with these teams that they got these winter breaks. So they only started the league in, uh, on Friday. And they beat Odessa 5-0, which is a good start into the league, but still, this lack of uh, playing competitive games might be an issue for for Paolo von von Seca and his team. But uh, yeah, well, they will play their typical Shakhtar football pass and move at home, especially. They won all their uh, uh, group stage matches at home. They even beat Man City, although it was the last match day six when it didn't really uh, matter for uh, City. But this interesting stat says that only PSG and Real Madrid. Uh, Left U Ukraine with a win away to Shakhtar uh, since 2014, which is uh, which, did, which shows how strong Shakhtar are at home. The market says so as well because uh, the line moved from uh, sorry from uh, from zero uh, handicap to minus uh, 0 0.25 on the home side. So public or pu public expects. Shakhtar maybe to get uh, out of this this game, but there is this risk of draw. Uh, personally, I would favor Shakhtar to to win this one. Although I'm not too too convinced about them not uh, conceding a goal because they conceded a goal in all their uh, home uh, group stage uh, games. So even though they won all of them, they conceded, which might be a problem uh, for a knockout if you play over two legs. Uh, however, this should be quite entertaining uh, to see who who gets who gets the edge. So, I actually this is the only tie where I can see, ex ex except Bayern and Besiktas. This is the only tie as well that I can see goals. So, 
the line is not that big. It's 2.25 for, 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 for the goals line. So I would, I would give a small, small punt on, uh, over 2.25 goals. Cool. Good man. All right. Something like, something like 2-1 for, uh, Shakhtar. For Shakhtar. Yeah. Cool. Good. All right. Then over to, uh, please, Martin. Um, I haven't, I'm not looking forward to this game. I'm not going to be, I'll, I'll see the result and that's it, I think. Um, it's, it's one of those that doesn't excite me too much. Um, but stats wise, I mean, over two and a half in the last four Champions League, um, Shakhtar games. Um, so I can see why Johnny's gone for that. I've actually gone for both teams to score at 1.73. I think, uh, I think that's like what Johnny said. I think it'd be a, a, quite an exciting game, maybe an open, um, open football match where both teams will find the net. Um, you know, Shakhtar have only kept one clean sheet in their last 12 Champions League games, so, you know, they're prone to conceding. I think Roma do have a goal in them. Um, I think Shakhtar have also done well that they, they didn't get rid of Fred in January. It looked like City was gonna, City were gonna sign him, but, um, I think that's a big boost that he's stayed. He'll probably go to City in the summer, to be honest, but, um, yeah, big, big boost that he's, he's probably gonna be playing. And they've also won the last three against Roma, so I see probably, I don't know, it's tough to call. Um, I think Roma will get a positive result. I reckon it could be a draw, maybe one all, something like that. Um, but both teams score 1.73. I won't put a single on it, I'll probably put it in an ACA. Um, but that is what I'm going for. Okay, good man. Over to you then, Dan. I'm gonna just screw Martin here. I'm all over Shakhtar on this one. <laughs> Um, so the match is going to be played in Kharkiv, which is where Shakhtar are playing at the moment because they're not allowed to play in the home stadium because of all the crap that's going on in Ukraine. But they've done really well um, in Kharkiv. Uh, they've won all three of their home group, uh, group games there, of course, including Man City and what was a dead rubber. Um, they're actually, they're, they're, they have returned to the domestic season as well. So there's no rustiness there. They smashed. Uh, Chorna Moritz, Odessa, 5-0 the weekend. Roma. Roma's Euro- Euro- European record away from home is really bad. Um, they, uh, this season, they only beat uh, Carabaya away from home. And, you know, that's Carabaya, their debut <laughs> season. Um, and since 2009, Roma have only won twice in 16 away Champions League games. Ouch. Yeah. I was like, Wow. Um, and bear in mind this is going to be played in, and I, I, I don't know if you've heard, but it's going to get very, very cold very soon, um, for us in Eastern Europe. So, um, it's going to be minus 11 in Shakhtar on now Wednesday, uh, sorry, in Kharkiv on Wednesday. No roof on the stadium. So I hope those Roma players have got their gloves on because, uh, <laughs> it's going to be chilly. It is going to be chilly. Um, so I'm going for Shakhtar to win this just because, um, Roma's really poor away record in Europe and, Shakhtar are actually quite decent at home. They're not a hard, they're not a, a, a pushover to go to. Um, it's not a nice place to go to, and I don't think Roma have got enough. And I think you can get around 2.4 uh, against uh, Shakhtar to win. Yeah, 2.4 so, up to 2.6 is the highest I can see. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. Definitely worth it, bearing in mind Roma's shocking waveform. Mm, good stuff. All right then, lads. So that's it for our uh, Champions League betting tips and predictions. I uh, hope you enjoy that. I'm going to ask the lads a co- another question though before we go. Boys, I want the one word answer. Uh, Johnny, who's your favourite to win? Champ, you mean the Champions League? I do. Uh, that's a difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Too, too early to say, but uh, I probably. Well, I, I, I was going to say PSG before uh, last week, but now uh, it's a tough one to tough one to say. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know, Paddy. Honestly, that's that's the longest one word answer in the history of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, Martin. I would love City to win it, but Bayern to me. Bayern and uh, Dan. Um, I want Manchester City to win it, and I believe they can. <laughs> <laughs> no one word on <laughs> No one listens to Paddy at all. No one, no one, no one ever listens to Paddy. You know what I mean? Paddy has great suggestions and everyone's like, stupid Irish. Anyway. But you can get to see two words. Who do you think are going to win it, Paddy? It doesn't matter. My opinion doesn't count. I'm just, I'm just the pretty one, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, 
Do you know what? I haven't thought about who I want to win. I, I want Juventus to win it because I like Juventus. Um, yeah. No, but they won't win it. Uh, who's gonna win? Who's gonna? Yeah, Man City. Man City. Two words. Yeah. Right. Uh, let's finish up then, lads. Uh, oh, our Twitter reminders. Johnny, where are you on Twitter and, and Facebook and social media? I brought up to Johnny on Twitter and brought up to Johnny on Facebook. Magic. Dan. You can find me on Twitter, Protips to Dan, all one word. Facebook, Protips to Dan, all one word. Nice and easy. And uh, Martin. You can find me on Twitter at ProTips to ENG. Come and say hi. We're also running a competition. We're giving away a mystery kit at the moment. So uh, come on to Twitter and retweet the post that I posted this morning and you'll be in with a chance. And on Facebook, ProTips to Martin, three separate words. Good stuff. And you can get me ProTips to Pod on Twitter, ProTips to Paddy on Facebook, and we're always hanging around the Pro Tips the UK page over on Facebook as well. All right, that's it from us then. Enjoy the Champions League. Uh, get over to protipster.com. Uh, have a look for the news part there. We all have uh, written articles about the Champions League matches and some championship uh, matches as well, so you get all our predictions and stats there. So check that out. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back on Thursday with our new sports podcast. All right, let's take it easy then. Enjoy the football. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out ProTipster.com, where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are ProTipsterGlobal. Or get in touch on Twitter, ProTipsterEN or ProTipsterIRL. Bye.